Hello everybody, Mr. E here. Welcome to another episode of Mr. E Talks Movies, a series where I go over various movies that I've seen and I my own opinions about them. As always guys, I'd like to thank you all for the support that I've been getting for this channel and uh, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any more videos. And uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if there's any movies that you like me to do a video on. And so, without further ado, let's get right into things. Woo! Alright, yeah. Summertime, and I am mere days away from leaving this hellhole and spending a week on our annual vacation with the family. Um, yeah, I'm gonna spend the next week walking through the beach, sitting down, reading, reading books, eating Italian ice and I go donuts and uh, yeah I'm also gonna be going there for my be there for my 21st birthday meaning I get to I'm gonna be able to drink for the first time I'll, I'll finally get to know what a margarita tastes like so yeah so help with the hype of you know leaving for vacation I thought it'd be fitting to go through um, a summer themed movie and so I the first movie I came up with for this was Weekend Burnings. This movie came out in 1989 and is a perfect example of a good summer movie. Yeah, I'm sure this movie may have gotten mixed reviews on Letterboxd, but it's still considered a classic by a lot of people. And so, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the movie starts off in New York City. It's uh, summertime and it's really, really hot out. Anyways, we're introduced to these two insurance executives, one named Larry Wilson, played by Andrew McCarthy, and Richard Parker, played by Jonathan Silverman. Yeah, they've been working pretty hard, working during the weekends and all that. It's, of course, it's summer and uh, they want to go to the beach, but they can't. So that's, yeah, even though they can't go to the beach, they, they, uh, they spent one day after work looking through papers while sitting in the, while sitting on top of a building with, you know, scorched asphalt and tar. And, uh, you know, while they're sitting there, they kind of discover something in the papers. Uh, something to do with a $2 million herring for a, a guy that just, well, died, potentially. And, uh. Larry and Larry and Richard see this as a as as you know their break. See, this is their this is their chance to you know get up in the ranks and have a and have a real kick-ass weekend on the beach. They go to work on Monday to uh, you know talk to their boss about the thing, and that's when they run into this one girl that's been working there. Her name is uh, Gwen Saunders, played by Catherine Mary Stewart, and that. Uh, Richard wants to go out with her, obviously, but he's he's too shy. And then, then Larry, he's like, oh, "Come on, come on, man!" He keeps getting the I don't know motivate him or anything. But... Hot. So uh, Richard tries to talk with talk with Gwen, and uh, to put it in simple terms, he blew it. Yeah, it was a. Very, very awkward interaction. Then we're introduced to Larry and Richard's boss, a guy named Bernie Lomax, played by Terry Kaiser. But, uh, yeah, they try to talk talk to him about the thing, but he's like, "Yeah, can, Bernie's like, yeah, can we can we like put a pin on this for for a bit? It's it's Monday, and I don't really want to talk to people." And, but yeah, we get to that later. And uh, once again, Richard asks Gwen for a date. I don't know, it was sometime later in the week, and he su he succeeds. Yay! He gets he gets a date with with a pretty girl. That's nice. Eventually, Larry and Richard meet up with Bernie at his office. They tell they tell him that he's that they they tell him that he's been working hard and that he and that they discovered the two million dollar thing about the guy that died and uh, 
well, he kind of, they basically kind of helped the company in the process. And so, and so Bernie gets impressed by it. He, uh, he says it's a good idea. He might be a good idea for them to talk over it over the weekend, preferably at Bernie's house over in the beach. And so, yeah, they're, the two are very excited. The two accept the offer and they get really excited. They're, they're going to spend the weekend at his boss's place. Have fun, have fun parties, lots of, lots of drinking and women and all that. Then it fast forwards to dinner, to dinner. We get the Bernie and apparently, this is a, this is a weird shift in tone. He wants Larry and Richard to be dead. So, yeah, yeah, he's been talking, yeah, he's, Talking with this dude named Vito. He's a he's a mob guy. Yeah, apparently they don't want them to find it. They didn't exactly want them to find out about the about the two million thing. And uh, yeah, my point is is that Bernie wants Richard and Larry out of the out of the picture so that out of the picture during the weekend while they're at the beach and so so that. You know, they can run off with the money. But uh, Vito, the mob guy, on the other hand, has other plans. Yeah, apparently he is... Apparently Vito is well aware that Bernie is apparently screwing Vito's girlfriend named Tina. <laughs> you know how that works. And so he hires... And so he gets his hitman, Polly, to kill Bernie instead and, you know, have the other guys take the fall for it. Very, very interesting setup for the, for a start here. But yeah, for the most part, Richard and Gwen's date goes well. They have dinner at a, at, I don't know, some kind of cheap place. And they, apparently, she, during the, their walk-in, She's she's like yeah I'm I'm kind of glad you like went on a, a went on this day with you you see I'm I'm leaving this today was my last day of work and I'm gonna spend the weekend at my parents before I before I you know head off head back to college and she's like and then he's like oh okay then and so they've got to figure out a nice little place to chill for a bit and uh, she suggests Richard's place and well he. Kind of just doesn't want to screw it up, so he pretty much hides the fact that he lives with his parents. And so they... So they go over to Richard's place, and, uh... Well, actually, it's his parents' place, and, uh, well, they have to try their best to, you know, keep it real quiet. She says she likes the 60s style, but, yeah, stuff gets all... Yeah, they try kissing for a while, but then, uh, but then Richard's dad walks in, in his underwear, and he just, you know, it, it, it just kind of screws up the whole thing. Yes, of course, Gwen gets pissed and leaves, and, you know, there's that very amusing situation, I'd say. I'd, I'd hate for that stuff to happen to me on my first date. So then we cut to Friday, at where... Bernie gets off of his ferry and heads for his place at the beach. Now, oh boy, this is this is this is where the stuff gets starts to get interesting. But first, I'm going to point something out. Uh, according to my parents and multiple sources on the internet, apparently, a majority of this movie at this point seems to take place at. The, get, get this, this movie was filmed at pretty much the exact same beach that me and my family have been going to for years. Carolina Beach to be exact, or at least somewhere, somewhere in that local area. Some, some say Fort Fisher, some say Bald Island, but you know, we spend a, we go to Carolina Beach all the time, so so yeah, this, the fact that this film was, that this movie was filmed 
at my at you know our annual vacation spot really really stands out for us so yeah that's that's really cool anyway after he arrives at his big mansion he kind of and meeting with his two landscapers one of them he just fired uh, anyway he gets on the phone and call and calls Polly who just got off the ferry as well We're gonna be here at six o'clock uh, I don't I don't want to like be here when you come in and kill him so you get so I, and uh, make sure you gotta keep keep it quiet or something and then he's like okay knowing dang well that he's not after those two guys. And uh, speaking of Richard and Larry, they're running late. They're about to miss the ferry, and so they literally jump onto it as it's moving, and well, this is, this part this part's funny. The dock, the ferry wasn't leaving, it was just docking, and then they're like, well, I guess we're early. So you have all the two are on the ferry, they're talking for a little bit, and then uh, Richard, Richard, he's like, I, I can't believe I, I can't believe I blew my day with Gwen. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm not gonna, and then, and then Larry's like, hey man, chin up. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna be, spend the whole weekend partying, drinking, and getting laid and all that. I don't know, that'll, you know, take your mind off of her. And then cut back to Bernie's place. The He's there in his office, and then uh, Polly comes in out of, from out of nowhere, gives him a little, gives him a little jump. They talk for a little bit, and then when uh, and then when Bernie's not looking, Polly injects injects him with poison, killing him in seconds. Yeah, this took a this took a dark turn right there. Yeah, he sticks the he sticks the needle and a, and a bag of coke into his pocket and uh, kind of just runs off. And right as that is happening, Richard and Larry show up to Ber show up to Bernie's. They're of course enjoying the place. They it, the place has a pool. There's like a big bar. Lots of lots of real fancy furniture and paintings. And they're like, holy, shit, we're gonna spend the whole weekend here. This is gonna be awesome. And they. They find, they, you know, can't seem to find Bernie, but, you know, they did find him in his off, him in his office. And of course, he's sitting there dead like this. And then they're like, hey man, hey man, come on, wake up. And he's probably wasted or something here. Let's move him onto the couch. And so they move him onto the couch and then he's, he's like, hey, come on, man, I'll, I'll go get a coffee. And then one of them, Kind of gets suspicious of Bernie. He kind of digs through his pockets, finds the needle and the coke, and then checks his pulse, and then he, he just finally realizes, holy <laughs> Bernie fucking <laughs> dead! And, and they're like, what? Oh, oh man, this is, this is, this is so messed up right now. This is, I mean, come on, man, we, we, our boss invites us over to the, to his place to party for the weekend, and he he's he's fucking dead. I, I agree. That, that's great. The whole place is ruined. We we gotta like call the cops and all that, and then they're like, oh wait wait wait, we can, we can't call the cops. They'll think we'll have something to do with it. So, and plus it'll plus it'll kind of screw up the whole weekend. I mean, I don't want to spend I don't want to spend the weekend at the police station answering questions I don't know the answer to, and then. Uh, now, before they could jump to conclusions, people start showing up to the party. Like, lots of people. Apparently, apparently they have parties at Bernie's place every weekend. So there's lots of people. Some of the guys start talking, start trying to talk to Bernie about stuff, and then... I don't know, he thinks they're giving him the silent treatment or whatever. Some massage guys come up and... Do this they kind of like do the neck thing where they do the neck crack and all that and they're like oh wow you're very relaxed for this so yeah there's a lot of this movie is just filled to the brim with all kinds of jokes relating to the 
people interacting with a dead body oblivious that said person is actually dead. But uh, I mean, these are cool and all, but but if you watch it a second time, the jokes get old pretty fast, you know. Until something clears up, Richard and Larry decide to decide to stick by Bernie throughout the throughout the evening and convince people that Bernie's still alive, that he he is never dead to begin with, and so they gotta stick by him and then when people try to talk to him he's like he's like so wasted right now he's he's out cold so yeah they're just sitting there right beside him and then bernie's just there like so yeah there's a lot of people there drinking and all that but the oh yeah i should mention gwen's there too for some reason yeah apparently her parents place is in the beach. She's there because she wants to see Bernie and thank him for giving her a summer job. But then the, but then Richard's like, hey, hey I don't, hey, man, I don't think. So yeah, they gotta try and distract her, and get her out from realizing that Bernie is dead. So <laughs> yeah, of course Gwen is still very much pissed at Richard for lying to her and that. Uh, you know, they talk for a little bit. You know, eventually they're like, all right, yeah, you know what? We're gonna, we gotta like get burnt. We gotta like get Bernie out of here. Maybe it's better to just get him out of the whole thing. So they carry his body and uh, next thing you know, they, next thing you know, they kind of knock him off. They kind of like knock him off of the balcony and he kind of like falls into the side there. And they're like, yeah, you know what? He's not gonna do anything. He's he's dead. So we gotta. So we can just leave him here, and uh, we'll come back to him in a bit, and uh, try and move him somewhere else. So in the meantime, let's I don't know talk to people. But yeah, Larry's out here getting his flirt on with a couple chicks, and uh, Richards Richard sees Gwen out there on the beach. They go up there. They talk, and uh, you know they're on. You know they're on good times again. They. Find an old lighthouse. They. This is this is another one of my favorite parts. They climb up to the lighthouse, see the nice view of the whole island. Too bad you can't really see much of it because he, because the, because it's night and uh, there's not a lot of, I don't know, civilization at the time this movie was filmed. I mean, obviously when I went to North, went to Carolina Beach, now there's like a whole bunch of. There's like a whole bunch of places everywhere in terms of condos and shops and all that. Anyway, they reach the top of the lighthouse. They see the view. Richard see, sees the light and he's like, hey man, I wonder how this works. And then the light flashes on him. He's like, ah! And then he, and then he falls down the stairs of the lighthouse and he gets hurt pretty bad. But, you know, nothing too serious. He and Gwen get out of the lighthouse. They sit there on the sand with the with the waves, and they have a nice romantic moment. They they kiss, and then they and then next thing you know, Richard's there. He sees Bernie's body washed up on the shore because of the freaking tides, and they gotta like move. And so see, he gets up, gets Gwen, and they like move, yeah, get out of there. After a while. Richard goes up to see Larry. He's he's getting laid. Good for him. <laughs> Tells him that Bernie's washed up on the shore. And so they take his body. They bring it up to his bedroom. And, uh, of course, this is later in the party. The place is pretty much empty. A lot, all the people have left. But the place is the place is trashed. But then again, a good party will be like that. So so yeah, later they they're trying to calm down after you know a whole day of in a whole party length of you know convincing people that a dead man is actually alive and uh tina shows up vito's girlfriend the girl bernie's been screwing comes up she's she's obviously she's freaking pissed so they she comes up with a knife at one point and uh 
you know, he goes up to, uh, goes up to Bernie's room, and, uh, I guess he can assume what happens. They're, they're, of course, Richard and Larry are there, and they're like, oh, crap, we're screwed. And, uh, well, the funny thing is, he doesn't seem to notice, and, uh, yeah, this is, this is another one of my favorite parts. Apparently, Tina does it with Bernie, you know, the, and all the while, a guy named Marty, a friend of Vito, watches as, you know, the, she's doing it, and she's like, so, so yeah, we just, so yeah, what I just said, yeah, that is essentially what happened. Tina banged a corpse. That's, that's all I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing goes wrong. She doesn't, she doesn't realize that Bernie's dead. Yeah, Marty's on the phone with Vito, and he's like, yeah, man, I, you know, remember how you said that Polly sent Polly to kill, kill Bernie? Yeah, well, here's the thing. He's still alive, and I, and I just saw him do it with your girlfriend. And, of course, Vito gets really pissed, although you only hear his voice, and so... Yeah, they gotta send Polly back to try and kill him again for real, even though he already succeeded the first time. So we get to the we get to the next morning. Richard's sitting out by the pool with Bernie. They're playing Monopoly. I mean, he's playing Monopoly, and he's got he's got you know Bernie's hand attached to a string, so that way when people walk by and go, "Hey, Bernie," and that way he can just pull the thing, and you know the body will just be like, "Hey." Yeah, Richard, Richard eventually wakes up and he's like, man, why, why are you playing Monopoly with Bernie? You gotta, we gotta like, I don't know, do something. We gotta like, do something with Bernie here. We can't just keep this up forever. And, uh, you know, the conversation was cut short because Gwen shows up. Yeah. But then, but then Richard's like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna have to tell her stuff. And then she try, he tries to explain to her everything, but uh, she doesn't believe him. And then she's, and then she's like, you, you doing this again? What the f Eventually, uh, once again, Larry throws Bernie off of the balcony. And he falls right on top of Polly who is there, and so he kind of tries to strangle him, and he's like, hey, hey, okay, now he's dead for real, even though he was already dead to begin with. After a little bit later, uh, Richard and Larry, they go to, they kind of go through, they kind of go through Bernie's office to try and investigate something, and they go through the answering machine, and they find the recorded phone call that Bernie had with Polly before his death as something that as he said he wanted that he wanted those two guys killed and uh, they're they're like holy crap and then they find out basically Bernie's plan to have the two of them killed they find a suitcase filled they find a suitcase filled with money and a, an alibi note yeah I'm not going to get much into details about that, but but it's simply their the plan basically was to have the two of them killed, and uh, you know the, he runs off with them. He kind of runs off with the two million dollars that you know the, that Richard and Larry found in the found in the you know the papers at the beginning of the movie. And they're like, yeah, we're 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 if we stay here we have to we have to get out of here okay yeah but we got to find bernie first where is he and they apparently they go down to where they where he dropped bernie and it turns out a kid has been burying him in the sand for, for a little while and 
and they try to go to a go to a ferry to kind of like bail out of the island, but they miss it, and so they they remember that Bernie has a boat, and uh, they use that to I don't know escape the island and evade the killer, and uh, well they got to go back to Bernie's house to get looked at, and uh, yeah, once they get into the house, they have you know. Bernie, of course, Bernie's with them too, and uh, apparently a couple of Bernie's landscapers show up to do their, I don't know, daily routine, but uh, they knock, apparently Richard knocks them out, and uh, they stuff them in the closet. So yeah, that's two counts of assault, right? Two counts of assault right there, but uh, they'll, they'll be fine. Yeah, they get to the boat, they, they're they having a lot of complications trying to get the boat to move. They kind of do a terrible job. They, they, of course, they tie Bernie's corpse to it, make it look like he's riding on it too. And uh, yeah, this part's funny. They drive, they drive, they drive the boat through the water and uh, it's yeah, there's a lot of boats, so they gotta like swerve around, try and ev evade getting hit by any of the boats, causing a lot of trouble. And uh, you know, you got Bernie still tied up. Eventually, he eventually the moves kind of set him loose, kind of tie him up, and uh, and uh, he falls out of the boat. And so they're and so the boat's still going, dragging. Bernie's body behind behind the boat, and uh, of course they drive past a couple of bullies, and uh, Bernie just hits a whole bunch of them, like bonk. Hey, what what, what was that? Bonk. It's again, and they look behind him, and he's like, "Oh man!" Well, after potentially breaking a whole bunch of Bernie's bones, the boat eventually runs out of gas. They get off of the boat. Paddling over to shore with while hanging on to Bernie's corpse. When they, I don't know, they have they have Bernie's arms on their shoulders and they're kind of dragging him back into the house. And uh, Gwen and Gwen sees them and that, uh, and then she's like, "Hey, what's what's going on? You, you said he was dead, but I saw you. I saw you like." I saw you like t take him inside. Like, yeah, that's that sounds like a couple, a bunch of bull. And uh, but you know, she she eventually sees Bernie's body, and she of course she freaks out. She's like, "Hey, man, we we, we didn't do it. We yeah, we're innocent. We yeah, we've been I don't know puppeting his corpse for the for the weekend." Eventually, the landscaper guys get, wake up and they escape the closet and they knock them out again. And then Polly comes back with a with a gun and he he shoots Bernie's already dead corpse. And then he sees the three of them and they're like, "Yeah, we we didn't see anything." And then one of them goes, "I'm I'm blind." And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna shoot you guys now." Wait, I'm out of bullets. And they're like, oh, thank goodness. And then he's like, ha, jumps on you, I have another gun. And of course, the big, of course, it's no, I don't know, movies with guns and whatnot without a big final shootout at the end, you know? So yeah, Paulie's chasing Richard, Larry, and Gwen throughout the house. Uh, of course, he has the gun. He's shoot. He's trying to shoot them, but you know they dodge the bullets. And uh, eventually, eventually, uh, Larry gets up and he tries to tie him up with uh, tie him up with a cable, and uh, he gives him the one to knock knocking Polly out once and for all. And, you know, saving the lives of everybody in the house, which is just three people. So yeah, 
pretty good ending. The, so yeah, that's pretty much the end. The cops show up, they they arrest the guy, and then he's like, you, they they arrest Polly. The paramedics show up for the landscapers. The ambulance comes up to take care of Bernie's body, and uh, yeah, the movie ends with the. Uh, with uh, Richard, Larry, and Gwen sitting there on the beach. Larry, Larry decides to stay at Bernie's place for the rest of the weekend. And I mean, I, I might as well. And uh, Richard decides to stay with this to stay with Gwen for a couple of days before she before she heads back to college. So yeah, everything kind of works out in their end. Their character arcs are finished. He gets the party. He gets the party, he gets the girl, they take the body away, or so they thought, because, well, the ambulance comes up, hits the boardwalk, and the the wheel thingy that Bernie was on kind of starts sliding away. And uh, eventually, it reaches the end of the boardwalk, and the, the body slides out, and hits from behind the, from behind the trio, and uh, one of the beachgoers goes, hey, hey, Bernie. And then they're like, hey, what do you mean? And then they look behind him and see Bernie, see the dead bodies there. And he starts, the, everyone starts freaking out and running away. <laughs> and here's the, you know, we got the kid burying him, that buried him earlier, comes up to him and he's like, hey, man, can, can, can I bury you? Thanks. And, and the kid starts burying him again as the credits start rolling. So that was Weekend at Bernie's. It was very short, but you know, it's got a lot of stuff good enough to, I don't know, grab the attention of the viewer. Like I said, there's a lot of joke, but there's a lot of really good jokes about, like I said, there's a lot of really good jokes about people interacting with a corpse, completely oblivious that the that, you know, the person is dead and that like I said, it gets old pretty quick, but you know, I have a lot of personal connections with this movie since this was filmed at my, filmed at the place where my family goes to vacation, or at least somewhere close to it. And that, so yeah, I ended up really liking this movie. It's, it's really, it's really fun. If you, if you like summer themed movies, I recommend giving this movie a shot. And so well, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. See you in a week.